So you've lucked out and scored one of the new Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, a RTX 30 series GPU, and you're considering throwing in one of these full fat PCI Gen 4 SSDs to complete your ultimate build. But you're not quite sure if you should spend the uh, double the price of a standard Gen 3 drive just to get that blazing fast performance. Or maybe you're a little less lucky and rocking a Ryzen 3000 series CPU on a B550 or X570 motherboard, or even the upcoming 11th gen CPUs if you have one of those, this video still applies to you. Now I want to take a look at these drives and compare it to a couple of the older or different uh, versions, you know, Gen 3 and SATA drives, to see if rocking one of these ultra fast drives actually makes any difference to the, the average gamer. But first, a message from this video's sponsor, Azrock. Their B550 Tai Chi Razer Edition board sports Razer Chroma RGB lighting, both on the board itself and via standard and addressable RGB headers. You also get support for AMD's Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, an optimized and powerful VRM design for even the highest end chips, and killer E3100 2.5 gig LAN and AX1650 Wi-Fi 6 on board. Find out more about it at the link in the description below. So first off, let me walk you through the drives we're going to be using. For the full fat, uh, ultra fast, 7 gigabytes per second in reads and writes uh, PCI Gen 4 drive, we're going to be using the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. We're also going to be using its older brother, the Sabrent Rocket 4, which is the sort of first gen, first wave of PCI Gen 4 drives, which are a little bit slower, but still blazing fast. Then we're going to be using a Samsung 960 Pro for basically one of the best PCI Gen 3 drives you can get your hands on. And for good measure, I'm throwing in a SATA SSD in the form of a Samsung 870 Cuvo, the QLC SSD, for a decent, if not insanely fast SATA drive. Now just to give you an idea of the general speed breakdown that these drives offer, let's take a look at Crystal Disk Mark and effectively the, the fastest, the top end numbers that you can see that are often quoted on the boxes. Taking a look at this graph, you can see that there's a pretty big step up between the SATA to the Gen 3 drive. In fact, it is going from 500 megabytes per second to 3.5 gigabytes per second. So a fair step up. There's then a moderate step up to the Gen 4 drive from 3.5 gig to 5 gig. And then to the Rocket 4 Plus, we're seeing an extra 2 gigabytes per second on top of there. The same goes for the writes as well. It's a very similar step up with slightly bigger stepping where the uh, 960 Pro uh, only writes at about 2.1, 2.15 gigabytes per second. Uh, whereas the Rocket 4 Plus writes at just shy of seven gigabytes per second. Now, when you look at benchmark results like that, it's pretty easy to, to make the assumption that the Rocket 4 Plus is gonna offer significantly better, say, game loading times than the, the SATA drive because it's 14 times faster. But unfortunately, it doesn't quite work like that. Let's take a look at a few games uh, and how they, they load up and the, the times that each of these drives take. And I want to start with Watch Dogs Legion.
in case you want to see those results in graph form because it's a little bit easier to, to look at them one at a time. Let's start off with Watch Dogs Legion. This is a relatively typical result for what I would expect here. The SATA drive is ever so slightly slower than the, the NVMe options, but overall the NVMe options are pretty much within margin of error. They're within two tenths of a second of each other with the Gen 4 and Gen 4 Plus drives basically being identical. And so even if you have the SATA drive, you're only looking about two seconds slower. In Cyberpunk, the story is pretty similar. Technically speaking, the Rocket 4 Plus, which is in theory the, the fastest drive, actually comes in second place behind the Gen 3 drive, although only by three tenths of a second. So, well, it's hardly going to be a, a game changing difference. Even with the SATA drive, you're only looking at about two seconds slower uh, overall. And again, that's hardly the difference between you being able to go and stick the kettle on while your game loads or not. Moving on to GTA 5, this is a game that is well known for being an absolute loading simulator. And I should make it clear that the online loading times are very different to the story mode. And that's what I'm using here for consistency. But overall, even though the SATA drive is still the slowest, it's only slower than the fastest drive by 1.2 seconds. So again, the really isn't much of a difference. And finally on Microsoft Flight, this one is probably the most erroneous result, where the Gen 3 drive still is pretty much consistently the fastest, but the Gen 4 Plus is actually slower than the SATA SSD by about two seconds. Again, this is pretty much, you know, not quite within margin of error, but it's reasonable enough to assume that they're all gonna load at pretty much the same time, and it's not like you will uh, be sitting and waiting for hours on end just to, to hit the, the play button instead. And interestingly, if we average all of those results, the Gen 4 Plus drive, mostly thanks to its slow Microsoft Flight uh, simulator performance, was actually the second slowest. But if you look at the delta between the fastest uh, Gen 3 drive and the slowest, which was the SATA, it's only two seconds. And considering that the Gen 3 drive is, you know, the sort of middle ground, the uh, you know, most approachable in terms of value and speed, well, it seems like that's a very good option. So when it comes to game loading times, there really isn't much of a difference between a, a, a reasonable SATA drive and the, the fastest Gen 4 drive you can get your hands on. The thing is that there are a lot more variables involved than just your raw storage speed when loading up games, and the difference between them, as you've seen, really isn't all that drastic. Just moving your games off of a hard drive is going to be a very significant loading time advantage, but other than that, any of these solid state drives are going to do you just fine. And actually, I would argue that spending a little bit more money on a good, say, SATA or Gen 3 drive is a much better shout than getting one of the cheaper Gen 4 drives or even just spending even more on a Gen 4 drive instead, because a lot of these drives, for example, the uh, 870 Cuvo is a QLC SSD. It's uh, technically a bit cheaper than some of the other uh, SATA SSDs on the market. But the thing is, because it's a QLC SSD, once it runs out of its SLC cache, it was incredibly slow to write to. I was copying some games over to the drive and it was writing at about 500 megabytes per second uh, when it started off, which is fine for a SATA drive. But then once it ran out of its cache, it was copying at 80 megabytes per second instead. Spending a little bit more on getting even the 860 Evo or something instead, or you know, a, a reasonable Gen 3 drive that doesn't have SOC caching issues is going to be a much better use of your time and funds and a much better experience for you and it won't affect your game loading times at all. So there you have it, at least from a game loading time perspective. If there's something else you would like to see me test with this assortment, then feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you want to check out any of the drives that I've been talking about, I'm going to leave links to them all in the description down below. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and where you watch this. I might leave a newer link for the, uh, the Gen 3 drive instead, but either way, 
feel free to check them out. There's also a load of other links in the description you can check out for different ways to support me and the, the channel, including uh, Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chats and sponsor free videos. There's also merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs. And there's plenty of other videos, videos on the end cards as well. Maybe go check out the Rocket 4 Plus review that came out relatively recently. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.